This is Matthew Cratter from Trade University, and today I want to talk about the Great Reset and negative real rates. If you don't know what negative real interest rates are, don't worry about that. I'm going to explain that in a minute. This video is meant as part of a series. I've already talked about the Great Reset and your house, which I'll link to below, the Great, the great Reset and the end of cash. I've talked about this plan about how you'll, you'll own nothing and be happy. The reason I'm making these videos is because I believe the coming decade is going to be a complete mess. We've seen this from really the beginning of 2020, a lot of really strange things going on. And I think you need to understand what is actually going on in the economic sphere as well in order to survive and maybe even prosper. The big problem we have is runaway government spending. We have a lot of promises that were made over, call it 80, 90 years ago, the Medicare, Medicaid, Social Security promises, and we're currently unable to make good on these promises. And so what the government's having to do is the uh, the central bank in the U.S., the Fed, is having to print a lot of money and buy government bonds in order to monetize or pay for this runaway budget uh, deficit spending in the U.S. This is a problem all around the world. And we can really see it in debt to GDP ratios. Back in 1960, uh, debt to GDP, so federal debt, and this isn't even counting Social Security or any off balance sheet things. Federal debt was around 50%, it was around 35% in 1980. In 2000, it was still around 50%. And now it's off the charts at 128%. So this is the basic situation. Uh, we have really high debt to GDP levels, not just in the US, but in all the major economies around the world. So how are the elites planning on dealing with this? It's very important to understand how this works. And in order to understand it, you have to understand what real interest rates are. Real interest rates are basically just the interest rate you're receiving or paying after inflation. So you subtract out inflation. So uh, an, an interest rate that uh, just the regular interest rate, which most people would think about, like you're earning 2% in your savings account, that'd be called the nominal interest rate. So let's say we have nominal interest rates at about 5%, and let's say inflation's at 4%. The way you calculate the real interest rate is you just take 5% minus 4%, you subtract out the inflation, and you end up with 1%. So we would say in this scenario that we have real interest rates of 1%. Now, this is a positive real rate. This is a good thing. It means you're still bait beating inflation. And we can see this just by eyeballing it. Our rate of return is higher than the inflation rate. And so ignoring taxes, ignoring fees and transaction costs, of course, maybe you're doing this in a Roth IRA or something like that. You're still beating inflation with your investment. You're making 1% a year in real terms. You'll often hear it said that way. And thus you're increasing your purchasing power, not by a lot, but by something. If you're finding this video helpful so far, I'd encourage you to hit that subscribe and like button. Maybe share it with a few friends as well. So let's try to calculate some real interest rates for the US. What we have here is we have the treasury rates. These are the government bonds. And we can see on the left here, we have the date uh, of the sample. So we'll take the most recent, the most recent sample, August 6th uh, from uh, uh, yesterday. And then you have the maturity of the bond. So here's the 10-year bond, which is sort of a benchmark one. You have the two-year, you have the 30-year, et cetera. We're going to focus on the 10-year rate. So this is a nominal 10-year interest rate, 1.31%. That's a nominal interest rate. And we're going to try to adjust that and calculate a real interest rate. One way of doing that, of course, is you can use the CPI. This is a little bit misleading because we're using a 10-year rate and then we're using a uh, we're using a 10-year bond and so a 10-year interest rate and then we're applying a CPI number that really moves around a lot but this is just uh, more of an exercise and if you think CPI rates interest uh, CPI inflation is going to stay at these at around five percent it's currently 5.32 percent year over year then this is a good example <clears throat> of how to calculate a real interest rate for this so we have the 10-year bond as we just said at 1.31 percent that's what we got right from here we have uh, CPI inflation at 5.32%. And I'm going to link to everything in the notes below so you can confirm this for yourself. The way we calculate the real interest rate is we just take the nominal rate minus inflation and we end up with minus 4%. I think this is, this is a decent estimate of where real rates are in the U.S. right now. Of course, if you use the near end of the curve, if you use what you're getting in your checking or savings account, it's probably 1% or less. And that would make this even 
um, even more uh, negative real rates. So we say a negative real rate because the real interest rate is below zero. Now, what does this mean? It means your purchasing power is going down by 4% every year if you have a negative real rate of return. And so the compounding doesn't work exactly like this because you're compounding off a smaller base, but just roughly back of the envelope, you uh, this would mean that your purchasing power would be going down about 40% over 10 years, which is just a tremendous loss of purchasing power. It means you can buy less goods, a lot less goods and services for the same amount of money. Let's say you go into retirement when you're 65 and you live till you're 85, you're retired for a good 20 years. Using uh, these same real rates, if you're compounding at a negative real rate of 4%, you would be losing about 80% of your purchasing power over your retirement uh, period. And this could be very, very difficult, especially if you have very high medical bills or other bills towards the end of your life. So this is why it matters. Uh, it really matters for everyone. And people forget about inflation. It's really the hidden thief that comes in the night. It's the way the government picks our pockets. And people feel good because they're earning 1.31%, but they, they forget to adjust for inflation. And when inflation is at 5 or 10%, it really means you have to earn much higher returns in order, in order just to run in place. So if inflation's at 5.32%, you need to earn 5.32% in order to just maintain your purchasing power and not even grow it. Let's look at another inflation rate. This is the rate that's kicked off by the TIPS, the Treasury uh, Inflation um, Protected, Inflation Protected Treasuries. This is called the break-even inflation rate. And so this is the market's best guess as to what inflation will be over the coming 10 years. You can see it moves around a lot. It used to be below 2% for a while, and now it's above 10%. I mean, I'm sorry, it's above 2%. We're running somewhere between 2% and 2.5%. This is what Jerome Powell means by when he, he says he wants inflation to run hot. Again, this is a market estimate of future inflation, but let's see what happens if we use this. We have the, uh, the nominal 10-year interest rate at 1.31%. 10-year inflation break-even rate, which we just got from this chart from the TIPS market at 2.37%. That gives us a real rate of about minus 1%. This isn't quite as bad as using as the number we got when we were using CPI inflation of over 5%. So this is another estimate. What happens if we use what I think are more accurate predictions or, or more accurate measurements of inflation? For example, the Chapwood Index, this hasn't been updated used to be a very robust web website. I don't know what happened now. It looks like it's sort of a scraped version of something that used to exist. This shows uh, really five-year inflation up until the first half of 2019. We've had a lot more inflation in the second half of 2020 and the first half of 2021. So I would say, if anything, these five-year averages may underestimate the true rate of inflation. Nonetheless, uh, obviously, if you're living in expensive metro areas like New York, Los Angeles, Chicago, you have inflation rates, according to Chapwood, of roughly 10 to 11%. If you're in Texas, maybe it's a little lower at 9%. That being said, uh, we're somewhere between 8 and 11% if we use uh, the Chapwood index, which I think is a much better measurement of inflation than the CPI. The CPI is a very massaged government number that's meant to show inflation as low as possible. And so they take out everything that would uh, or they adjust using hedonic adjustment, various various um, techniques to make the inflation look lower. But if we use the Chapwood Index, we take that 10-year rate of 1.31%. We say that the inf real inflation rate, uh, or the I would should I should say the actual inflation rate is about 10%. Then your real interest rate is minus 8.69%. This is a brutal, brutal negative. Uh, negative real interest rate. Over 10 years, you lo lose approximately 87% of your purchasing power. And it doesn't get worse than that. If you used to buy something for a dollar, then it's going to cost uh, almost, almost double at that point. If we look historically where real rates have gotten when GDP, uh, debt to GDP levels got very high, we can see that they've almost always gotten down to minus 15%. This happened after the Civil War. This is just a great chart uh, put out by MacroOps and Alex Barrow here. So minus 15% after the Civil War, uh, minus 15% after World War I, and minus 15% after World War II. And then we can see that they hung around below 
uh, below the zero axis right here, uh, below the zero level. So anything where this blue line is below uh, this horizontal line of zero, those are negative real interest rates. We can see right now we're just starting to get negative real interest rates. So this is using uh, this is again using ten year ten year real interest rates. What this suggests is that we're in for a period of prolonged negative interest rates. This is really the only way out of the current problem. This is how you get from debt to GDP levels of 135% back down to 40 or 50%. We pointed out here that in the, in the early 60s, or the early 80s, and the early 2000s, the debt to GDP level was somewhere between 35 and 50% in the US. This is a much more normal level the reason we compare debt to GDP is it shows us the, or it hints at the capabilities of the economy to service the debt. If you have a lot of debt in a very small economy, then this ratio will be higher, and it means it's much more difficult for the real economy to service that debt. And normally, hitting 130% debt to GDP has been a point of no return for economies, with one major exception, which is Japan. And there are some very interesting reasons for that, which I do talk about in some of my other videos. So what's going to happen? Well, how does this relate to the Great Reset? Basically, the only way out of this debt mess, these very high debt to GDP levels, is a decade of very negative real interest rates. And now you understand what negative real interest rates are. Basically, you're making money at a... Um, a rate that's lower than the inflation rate. And so when you adjust for inflation, it actually shows your purchasing power going down every year. The only other way to get out of this mess is really austerity. Cut government spending, cut social security benefits, uh, cut the defense budget, etc. This is not politically tenable. The stock market would fall if the Fed stopped propping it up and if the government, if the government really uh, scaled back their spending because government spending is such a huge percentage of GDP, including all the transfer payments uh, that help increase personal income, all these direct-to-consumer payments that have been happening since the beginning of the pandemic. And so austerity really won't work if a politician, if a president, if a Congress tries austerity. In other words, cutting government spending is a way of getting out of debt. What happens is the economy will shrink and those uh, GDP itself will shrink because there'll be less, uh, less government spending and less consumer spending. And so you'll have uh, an economic contraction and those politicians will get voted out. Not to mention the fact if all of a sudden your social security got cut, you would vote out every politician in sight who voted for that. Austerity never works. If it's tried, it usually fails fairly quickly and the government and the central bank have to go back to deficit spending that's financed <clears throat> by central bank money printing. That's where we are today. And that's why we're going to see probably at least 10 years of very negative real rates. They can go a lot more negative, as we saw. They really can get down to minus 10%, minus 15%, especially when you have debt levels as high as they are. Now, how do you protect yourself? Well, negative real interest rates are very bad for anyone who holds cash, anyone who holds bonds, even junk bonds right now. For the most part, the indices are trading below the actual rate of inflation. And so if you're holding cash, you're holding bonds, their yields or their interest rates are less than inflation. And so you will have a negative real rate of return on that investment. There are other asset classes that adjust well for this or adjust in a much better way. Those are stocks, real estate, and very scarce cryptocurrencies like Bitcoin. Bitcoin is the only one that really has credible scarcity. So these are places to hide when there are real when there are negative real interest rates, you don't want to be in cash or bonds. It's good to have three months, for example, of, of emergency cash or six months or whatever the number is for you, but you don't want to hold a lot of money in cash because when they're, if they're negative 10 or 15% interest rates, let's say they're negative 10% interest rates, after 10 years, you've essentially lost 100% of your purchasing power if you are in cash or in bonds. If you're in stocks, real estate, Bitcoin, they just keep going up. And the reason they keep going up and the reason there's not a bubble is because the currency keeps going down. And this is one reason we're seeing crazy real estate prices, crazy stock prices, and obviously Bitcoin uh, really just getting started as well. 
So these are the these are the places you want to hide over the coming decade. This is where you can hide from the Great Reset: stocks, real estate, and especially Bitcoin, because it's very uh, easy to transport across borders if you need to, etc. In addition, there's another very interesting commodity investment that you can use to protect yourself from inflation. And the way I've structured this is it still will make a lot of money, even if the price of the commodity does not go up very much or it stays right where it is. If you understand how commodities work, you'll know what I'm talking about. I do uh, discuss this. I made a video about this. It's in the paid portion of my website. This is under my favorite long-term investments. And in this section, I have my favorite SPAC, which I bought back in March 20 uh, of 2021. We can, um, you can actually get into this investment now at a lower price than I paid. There is the commodity play, which I'm talking about is a great hedge against real uh, negative real rates. And then in addition, I did a Bitcoin options play about a week ago, a week and a half ago. That is um, also an interesting way of structuring a, uh, a Bitcoin investment. It's not hodling, but it is a, way to, a useful way of using options to have a very high return in Bitcoin over a short period of time. If you join Trader University Premium, in addition to getting access to all of these, my favorite long-term investments, including this great hedge against negative real rates, you also get access to all of my courses. And there are about 15 courses right now that include how to make money with IPOs, how to trade options, uh, swing trading, trading futures, as well as my flagship course, Learn to Trade Stocks Like a Pro. So if you click, I'll, I'll put a link to this list of courses down in the description notes below. You can click on any of these and get a list of the lectures. Now, normally, uh, normally access to everything on the website, so my long-term investments, also my favorite momentum stocks, access to all of this is uh, normally just $125 for 30 days. But I want to give you a special coupon code because you've watched this video all the way to the end. So if you click on the link in the description notes below, just that first link, it will take you to this page. You can browse all of the courses. And then if this is something that interests you, you can scroll all the way down to the bottom. Click right here where it says, get it now. That will take you to the checkout page. And I want to give you a special coupon code. Normally, as I said, access for 30 days is just $125. But with this coupon code YT99, capital Y, capital Y, capital T, 99, as in YouTube, 99. Click update right here, that and that will take $26 off the 30-day price. So you'll get access to everything, including that uh, inflation hedge, that negative real rate hedge. Get access to everything for just $99 for 30 days. And there are no long-term contracts or anything like that. So you can watch all the videos, make a note of all my long-term investments, cancel before the 30 days is up, and you won't be charged again. But if you choose to stick around, I'm constantly adding new lectures. I've especially been adding lectures to, um, I've especially adding lectures to uh, uh, my course on Bitcoin, which is down here. It's called the Ultimate Guide to Bitcoin, where I talk about secrets of the Bitcoin network, final settlement assurances, etc. And this will really make you a much better hodler because you'll understand how Bitcoin really works at a very deep and technical level. So check these out if you're interested. Most of my material is available for free on YouTube, 99%. But then some of the more advanced techniques for people who really want to take this to the next level, I put behind the paywall and uh, that gives people access to go to go deeper if they want to. If you found this video helpful, be sure to hit that subscribe and like button. Hit the notification bell if you want to be notified when I publish my next video. And let me know your questions and comments in the comment section below. Thanks a lot for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.